تفضل شيخ ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أها ناو وإذا حييتم بتحية فحيوا بأحسن منها أو ردوها. Pay attention to the following ayah. The saying of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. أفحسبتم أنما خلقناكم عبثا وأن لكم إلينا لا ترجعون فتعالى الله الملك الحق Do you think that you are created in vain and you're not coming back to us? Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do anything or to create anything in vain. Keep your mindset on that ayah. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the era of technology, the era of social media, the era of games, iPhones, and such. How many of you did not play a video game? Sheikh Abu Ayman, did you play now? Never? <laughs> MashaAllah. We have three. Alhamdulillah. So that's four, five, six. MashaAllah. Is it because it's not available or not available? Alhamdulillah. It doesn't make sense. Tight. So we have six from 200. That's three percent. Alhamdulillah. No one doubts that internet and such has benefits. And at the same time, we know that there is nothing pure good and there is nothing pure evil. So there are good things and there are bad things. But if you look at the video games, one thing that makes you relax or even the parents and those who are adhering to the religion is the name, games. It's not something, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't have an implication of haram. This is how we change even, even like you have like interest instead of riba. Spiritual drink instead of alcohol. So they change the names and all that. But with this one, it's games. So I want to play and the parents are relaxed. My son is playing games, no big deal. You might even do that, but do you know what it entails? Do you know the brains behind those games? Do you know their objectives? Why they're making it? What's the purpose of it? We don't. The one who made it understands and knows what's in there, but we fall in it under the name of games. So anyone who does not think before they enter the game and take their time and supervise as parents, they're going to fall into something very dangerous and very risky, especially as believers, as Muslims. We know our purpose of creation and we know the limitations and we know what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll see how that works. Let's take a look, a historical look, and also get an idea about these games that are so common nowadays, uh, people who are involved in this. Let's take a look. In 1992, the first violent game surfaced, Mortal Kombat. That's the first violent game. 1993, the second followed, Doom which is a marine who kills demons in hell. Whatever that character is, 
Whatever they do, someone running around, you're controlling that person, he's killing what? Bad guys. So it's good bait for you and me and everyone. It's like you're enjoying good and forbidding evil, right? You go in to play a game for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kill the bad people. Tayyip, back then, anyone can play. Old, young, it's open. You have it, you can play. In my time, Sheikh Abu Ayman and others, we don't have those games at our disposal where you can sit at home and close the door and enjoy it and maybe combine your forces with 10 other people playing in different countries, all playing the same game. You may have to go to a game store or to a center or a game room or something like that and you have to get some money and you got to put quarters and you cannot stay there. There's open, uh, the, the, they open and they close. You cannot spend too much time there because you don't have the money, you don't have the time and you need someone to get you there and so forth. So it was difficult. Our time is a little bit, not a little bit, very easy. September 1994, Entertainment Software Rating Board, or what they call ESRB, was formed. What's the purpose of that? Is to set a specific age and rating for the games. This game, age 4 to 5, or 4 to 6, 10 to 15, and so forth, and the rating of it the rating of how violent it is, and the sexual contact, uh, content of it. So they rate that. Who can watch it alone? Who can watch it with parents? I don't even, you know, sometimes when I think of that, it's like, if you can't watch it alone, why do you want to watch it with your parents? Or why is it alone with your parents? So if it's haram to watch it alone, it's not haram to watch it with your parents? I mean, Muslim perspective. But anyway, they do that. Rated R restricted. And you have games, but they don't have that. Any, as long as it's a game. So you can play it and no control over that. Mainly, they did that rating board for those two games. The Mortal Kombat and for the Doom. But of course, they may not say that. Nowadays, we are infested with a game called Fortnite. Who knows? You know it, though? Who likes it? Oh, only a few people, mashallah. Tayyip. What is a Fortnite? 100, just in brief, 100 people, for those who don't know, 100 people fall from an airplane and they try to survive. And the one who smokes everyone and survive is the winner. They were together, they were friends, they were in one plane, now they fall, they kill each other, and the one who stays alive is the one you call a winner. Minecraft sounds good, creative, you do uh, crafting, tools, homes, and everything. But you know, naturally, uh, this is in the wilderness and you have people, bad people will attack you and everything. So you need to be creative in defending yourself and manufacture and doing things so you can survive. So you end up killing people or people who attack you. You kill them and we see who is going to survive. Call of Duty is another game. You kill everyone on the other team. So it's like a lot of failure. So the facts of the games and the use of those games when you play. Let's take another investigation. Number one, il aqil with sana with basar, brain, ears, or hearing, vision. When you play a game, those three tools have to be utilized to the max. You have to be intensely in it, thinking, 
prepared, listening, watching. Do you know that the majority of the stress for the people happens when you drive to work and you come back from work? You know why? Because especially those who don't pay attention, I know in Australia a little bit different. In America we don't care about, we drive. Speed limit 55, looks good. Take a picture of it and keep going. You drive fast and you leave late. So you're cutting, you're racing, you're anxious, you're impatient. By the time you get to work and you come back home, your body collapses from the focus. You have a person who's playing the game for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Imagine the complete focus that you have and how much you put energy and attention in your mind and in your ears and your eyes and you can tell what kind of life you're going to have. So basically what do you do to the most valuable parts of your body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about it all the time. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفِيدَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ He gave you the brain, the intellect, and the eyes and the vision for a noble purpose. Very little you give thanks. Now you are using it for no use. And you are working, overworking it for no use. Number two. Al-Mut'a, the pleasure in the game, is what you really like in it. So what they do before, they used to do in 2D, pixels. Now you have it in 3D. You have it in 3D, the environment, the people, the shapes and everything, it looks so real. You actually feel that you're fighting. Basketball games, you actually, the person, they are depicted in a way that it looks like you really have the players and everything. The same thing with those games. So you are in a video game, but in reality, you feel deep inside it's a real life. The way they make it, the sounds, the views, everything looks so real. So you feel that you're enjoying yourself. And what's the purpose of that? To immerse you in it to make you dive in it, to make you forget yourself because it is so captivating and that is the whole purpose behind doing it this way. Knowing that you can play the game and you can share it with your friend or you can have another person playing with you, you don't have to have somebody over coming over. So it's eliminating so many things and I know that some of you know, those who play it, how are you reacting? How is your voice? You put all those things on your ears and you actually live in it. You're screaming like a maniac. you yelling, majority I'm sure cussing, unless your dad is there or your mom or someone. Cursing, happy, you name it, you close the door and you go. So it's fun. To you it's fun, to the one who gets in it it's fun, but what's the fun in it? You're forgetting the damage in it. Just like someone who's an alcoholic, he takes a drink of alcohol and he takes another one, he feels a little bit good, but he doesn't know what that alcohol is going to do for him. Tomorrow, when he wakes up, after he, uh, yani all of those things go away. You don't want the same thing with a video game. Ilaq wa riyada. Islamically, you have to have fun. You need to have fun. You want to play and you want to go for sports. But the problem here is what? In Islam, when you play a sport, it needs to be a productive sport, something that is not haram, number one. Number two, it's healthy in a way. You go, you go swimming, you go ride horses, you go wrestling, you do things like that that actually builds you. It actually benefits you 
and it makes your whole body involved without too much focus on one part and it's not for a long time just like the game. So there has to be some benefit in it. Not little, but yani, more benefit in that. In those games, what's the benefit? Okay, Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum. Let me ask you a question. If you win, what happens? Did you ever win? Did you? They always kill you? And what's the catch? So you keep playing. One game I played before, deadly game. You know what that game, Sheikh Obayna? Pac-Man. <laughs> you don't know it? That is Sheikh Obayna. You have banana, you have pears, cherries. you have apricots, you have cherries in it, and you just bunch it. I like banana. So, I spend all my money to get it to that phase. It's not easy. You probably need to pray for a year before you can get to another phase, even if they give you the pattern. You always get killed. So you keep playing and playing. They manufacture it, make it in a way that you have to spend so much money before you accomplish your goal. And once you accomplish your goal, it gets so hard that you don't know what's next. And as a human being created curious, you always want to know what comes next. I want to finish that screen and see what's next. Oh, it changes color. Oh, you have different fruit. Oh, I wonder what comes after this and that. You keep playing it. and. Every game they do the same thing. So when you play those games, Fortnite and such, you want to see what comes next and you want to see if you can make this and how many points you get and it's a competition that has no end. By patience. Patience is the most important matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. When you want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want patience. When you play a game, you want patience. When you work, you need patience. You get so much patience in that game to suffer and to sit and to focus and to do any, everything. But does it really teach you patience, the patience that really benefits you? Yeah, if your dad calls you, if your mom calls you, if you need to study, would you leave that game and go and have the patience and study and relax because you already practiced that game and it taught you patience? It taught you patience to play it for one hour, two hours, three hours, five hours? It didn't. So it sounds like it's giving you patience, but it's giving you patience, the opposite of patience. Patience to give up the fruitful patience. That's another one. Danger, khutura. These games were fought by the government, or they tried to fight it, and that's why they put rules for it, and that's why they put the ratings for it. What's the purpose? Because they realize that it's building the teens and the children in a wrong way. They are instilling in them violence. And usually the human being, when you see something over and over and over, you want to try it. And you want to see it. And you want to taste it. And that's the powerful advertisement that people have. One time in the company when I wanted to advertise on television, and it was so expensive, and he told me how many times you want to repeat it, I said, you know, I'm going to do it once. And he said, you're not going to get any thing from it. He said, you need to do it, if not, I'm not going to say weekly, daily, and more than once, over and over and over, before people can get you and know you and want to try you. And by the way, when I came to the United States, turn the TV, and comes a commercial. What is it? The Syrian. Still have it here? Cheerios? Yes. Sir. You have it? Paula, you know it? 
Cheerios. Cheerios. You're watching that thing and it comes, you know, then somebody sings that word and yo yo I O I O I O and it goes from the box and the milk flies in the sky and you have the glass here with the cherry yo yo's in it and the milk pours in it and it comes up and it puffs and it's like yeah click it off you know and just uh, go do something then you come back again and you see the same thing again you see it's like you can't get away from it so you sit sometimes and you don't turn it off and you start watching Okay, it's planted in my head. I went to the store one time, and I'm walking in the aisles buying stuff, and I looked and I said, hey, that's the box that I see all the time. I want to test it. I want to have even a taste. Just a taste. Until now, I'm still eating it. <laughs> How did they get me? Repetition. Repetition. So the danger, that you look at that, those games, it's, it's, it's how, how they get you to get in there and they know in what, they, they know once you get in there, you fell in the trap. The trap is what we call addiction. Addiction to the game where you cannot function, you just want to continue on that. It's exactly like gambling in a different way. Gambling, you play and you lose. You say, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it. I can't be losing all the time. I'm going to win at least once. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, then you win. You win a little bit. Okay, how much you played for a dollar? You win again. You win 10 times. $10. That's not much money. Let me make it big. Okay, how about if I pay for $10 or $20? Boom, you lost it. You lost all the money that you saved. You say, I'm going to get that money. So instead of just making it 20, let me do it 50. I'll catch up everything quickly. You look at yourself, you don't have money. What do you do? You can't. You go home. You start collecting money. You start borrowing money. You start selling your life. You, yeah, the people, they lose everything they have, thinking that eventually they're going to win. Same thing here. You have a game that's capturing you. You know you could have killed him, and you know you could have saved him, and you know you could have had this, and if I play it one more time, and you continue on doing that for a long time until you find yourself not knowing day from night. You close the door, it's like, did you pray, Baba? Oh yeah, I prayed Fajr. Do you know it's Asia now? Really? Yeah, you look, you don't feel the time. Why? Because you're so focused. I know Sheikh Abayma can concur with that statement. And others, you, and anyone who is sick, when you come and you give a lecture, and you're so involved, thinking, and relating, and telling, and watching, and all of that, you don't feel the pain. And then you go home, your wife is watching you, and when you go home, you throw yourself on the floor, my leg, my back, my head, give me this, give me that. It's like, what a liar. You were just standing for three hours, no complaints, no nothing. When you come home, you throw yourself. Try to convince them. Well, I, well, I have no idea. Because you're focused, our problem is we don't focus. When you focus on something, you don't feel the time. If you focus on happiness, you will be happy. If you focus on your food, you know what's the, main, the bad thing in our food? The worst thing you can eat is all you can eat. The worst thing you can do is to go to all you can eat cafeteria. Because you look, they have a million kind of food. How can you? It's like, how does it taste? I don't know. My plate has 10 kinds of food. I don't know if I ate rice with macaroni or whatever, it's like. But when you have one dish, you focus. You get in those video games and you are so focused in it, you forgot the salah, 
You forgot your school, you forgot your parents, you forgot everything because you are so involved in that. And that's the danger of it. طيب. If we think a little bit, ما هو العامل المشترك بين كل هذه الألعاب? What is the common thing in these games? One thing you find in all of them. Number one, addiction. Each one is made where you fall in love with it and they made something in it to attract you for more and more. Similar to what? Soap opera. What do they do? You're watching, a scene comes, you definitely want to know what's going to happen, and they will tell you, we'll continue tomorrow. Your mind is so attached to it, I want to see what happens. Then you come tomorrow and you watch it. With this game, the same thing. Every action, every stage, every uh, thing you do in that, it's always something that's harder, that cuter, different color, different sound, different this and different that, until you want to continue on it. So addiction is the most common thing amongst them. Tayyip. In Turkey's, in Turkey's on what? You focused on what in all these games? Who knows? Winning. Huh? Winning. Winning? Yeah, okay, winning. What is winning? What does winning do? Excited. Look. Excited. Killing everyone. You fall, you kill the 99 and you're there. You're fighting the enemy, you're there. All the people attacking you, you kill them, you're there. It's you. The main focus is me. I don't care what happened to the rest of the world. I want to live. And I want to be the only one who has everything. Similar to the saying, if it feels good, do it. Can we say that as Muslims? If it is right, do it. If it feels good, that means you are just like an animal. And that is the main thing you have in these games. It's yourself. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ أَسْعَدُ النَّاسِ مَنْ أَسْعَدَ النَّاسِ The most happy of the people is the one who makes people happy. أَسْعِدْ Tasad. Make other people happy, you will be happy. Here, kill, you'll have fun. Kill, you live. Kill, it's all yours. Kill, you're the big man. It's all killing. Nothing for the other one. I mean, okay, 100 people fell. Can't you make a friend with one of them and, you know, live together, uh, roommates or something? You want to kill all of them? What's the plan? yourself so yes it's a game but it is building in you individualism and selfishness you want everything for yourself subconsciously this is how it's going to develop you time is going to be wasted what's the average time that people play seriously weekends and uh, summer and all that Allah is stop for Allah. I know people they play the whole weekend. No less than 12 to 16 hours a day. They forget themselves. They don't eat. They don't even brush their teeth. They don't even go to bed. They sleep on the game. I'm a teacher and I see students. And I see how they come, and I ask him, and I get into it, and I ask their friends. Most of them on the game, the parents go to sleep, they wake up and go sit there and start playing that game. So the time that they spend, it is beyond imagination that makes it even the basics. You cannot have proper sleep or proper diet or food or or cleanliness or everything, the person comes to the school with his head like a ghoul. 
Didn't you brush your teeth or your hair or anything? I was in a hurry. Why you're so sleepy? You'll be talking and the student is falling asleep because he was in the game. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Look at the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people who are destined to go to hell. They have brains but they don't use or reflect with. They have eyes but they don't really see with it. They have ears but they don't really hear with it. They are like cattle. In fact, they are more misguided than cattle. So are those people, Ya Allah, heedless people. What is heedless? A person who is involved in something and forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he is created for. You put yourself in this gear, you are the absolute heedless person. Because you are forgetting your salah, and you're forgetting your life, and you're forgetting your parents, and you're forgetting your school. It's like you're designating yourself to be from the people of the hellfire. These games have in common, they encourage you for violence. They don't tell you do it, but you get the feeling. You see people, they go by guns or beating uh, guns or, uh, or swords or something like that, and they actually hit each other, the brothers and the sisters, out of gain, they just hit and they want to play and they want to mimic that. Anything you do as a child, they copy it. If you see your mom wearing hijab, you want to wear the hijab. If you see your dad growing a beard, you want to grow a beard. If you see a brush, this is how it is. So you see those games, violence, 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 you want to test it. You want to test it and that's why when you have gangs, that's exactly what these games teach you to be. They teach you to be merciless, they teach you to be selfish, they teach you to belittle the idea of killing. In fact, those games make you celebrate when you kill someone. Sahse? Right or wrong? When you kill someone, what do you do? You start dancing, right? You don't? I mean, you know, sounds good. You're playing a game, again, you're playing a game. But subconsciously, you find yourself dancing when something happens outside. Sometimes you would see when someone got shot or something, it's no big deal. You've seen death, you've seen people die, and you've seen blood, and you've seen all of that. So it makes it easy for you to deal with violence or to get involved in violence or to approve violence for some people who do it. Where did you get that? From the game. Ilkesel. Laziness. Sluggishness. You see the person with those games, he barely walks. He walks like he has some kind of disease or cripple or something because he's sitting for eight hours. No exercise, no proper walk, no nothing doing. You, you live your life for such a long time, your body is not functioning. In fact, your hands, your hands are like crippled. You cannot use your hand properly because everything is used by looking and by listening and by hearing. So you disabled your hands. So if someone tells you do something or work something, you cannot really use your hands properly. If someone tells you race, you cannot really run properly because the practice that you're supposed to have all the time, it's not there, it kills that in you. A person who plays that game isolated, secluded, 
You find a person, if you sit with him, he, can, he sits like an idiot in a crowd. He cannot talk. He doesn't know what to talk about. When you talk, you know, you see some people, you'll be talking to him, and you go, huh? You ask him a question, he's looking at you. He's like this, and you say, what's your name? Uh, what did you say? I do that all the time. I'm, you know, it's like, tell me the five pillars of Islam, and I give you five dollars. What was the question? You're looking at me, and I just told you the question. But mind is not there, because you see pictures in the front of you, and people running, all you can relate to is videos and pictures. You cannot relate to real human being, or an intellectual conversation, or Q&A, answer. You sit in the class, or you sit in the group, uh, you know, with the people, with your parents, you don't know what to talk about. You don't know how to respond. You don't sound normal. Why? Because you isolated yourself from being sociable, from your family, from say, yani, gathering and doing all of those things. Finally, the common thing is you incapacitate the greatness of your brain and vision and hearing. Your brain doesn't think on one thing. You want to kill that person. That's all you care about. That's all you focused about. That's what you're looking for. Someone to kill. Are you looking for someone to help? Are you looking for something to create? Are you looking for, are you thinking? Are you building? Are you doing? No. So your mind is not utilized the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for you. The same for your eyes and the same for your ears, so you really incapacitated yourself. We as believers believe that we have hukuk wa mas'uli. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal inna li nafsika alayka haqq wa inna li ahlika alayka haqq wa inna li rabbika alayka haqq fa a'ti kulli li haqq al haqq. You have responsibility to take care of yourself. You need to sleep eight hours a day as much as you can. You need to eat three times a day. You need to clean yourself. You need to read and nurture yourself. You need to exercise. You need to work. You, need, you can't do all of any of that. So you failed in taking care of yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This body of yours is a responsibility. It's not yours. That's why if you kill yourself, you go to hell. Because it's like killing someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that life and he said you are entrusted with it. Make sure you save it with everything so you're not doing that. What about your family? What about your brothers? Your parents? Your homework? You're not doing that. Another failing. What about you have yourself? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about your prayers. What about the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you? You fail on that. So you're not doing that. Even, look at this. Even if you're fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or doing qiyam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you fail to take care of your body and your family and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course here you're doing it, you fail in any of those two, what happens? You're sinning. You're sinning. You're not doing good. You're fasting. You can't work. You can't hurt. You cannot help. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you break your fast and do that. So, look what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. Ihris ala ma yanfa'u. Wa la ta'jaz. Ista'in billah wa la ta'jaz. Make sure you do the things that benefit you. Seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't act like you cannot function or you cannot work or you cannot do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to take care of your time. In fact, majority of people at loss, the Prophet ﷺ said, when it comes to time and health. Majority of people. Maghbun, at loss or loser. Some scholars, Shaykh Abu Ishaq al in person, 
said, if I can sell my house to buy time so I can search and learn more about this religion, Wallahi, I will do that. The time that people waste, people are dying to have. This time the Prophet ﷺ said, the best amongst you is the one who lives longer and does righteous. Yabna Adam, innama anta min ish. So I a few hours, a year, days. إِذَا ذَهَبَ يَوْمُكْ ذَهَبَ بَعْضُ When one day passes, part of you is chipped. So if you look at yourself, look at yourself as someone who is time. When, when a second ticks, part of you is gone. When all the time, let's say 60 years, 70 years finished, you finished. So when you sit playing eight hours, or four hours, or one hour, you're really losing your life. And one of the scholars said, Astaghrib atahajjab min insan ya'lam anna fi hu anna hu hunaka yawm qiyama wa anna hunaka athab wa anna hunaka jahannam wa yamdi alayhi daqiqa aw thaniya aw sa'a la yadhkur fiha ismullah aw la ya'mal fiha shay yatakarra fihi lillah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, um, it amazes me how someone knows there is hell and passes some time and he is not doing something good to get him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some people are saying, some of the scholars also said that kunna na'uddu sa'ad أو الوقت أو الدقائق كما يعد أحدكم الدراهم. You come and you start counting your cash, how much money you have. They care for their time the way you care for your money. It's more valuable than money because it gets you closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So when you talk about games, I'm going. I'm not going to tell you cut it off and. Sell everything you have or break it. There is something called balance. Moaza. Etidad. I play little. And I know my responsibility. I don't allow myself to get attached to it. In fact, if I see myself getting attached to it, I leave it altogether. But if you can control yourself and your parents or the parents can control their children, supervise, okay, you have one hour to play, go play, and after that you take the game or you shut the game or you do it yourself, then it's okay. But majority of people don't know how to balance and to be moderate. Some people, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in certain aspects. And they forget other things. They come to the masjid and they pray and they fast and everything, and they're cutting relationship with their kinship. Some other people, they're focusing on one aspect, and they don't pray Fajr time, or don't wake up for Fajr. Balancing is the key. You can enjoy the game, and at the same time, not harm yourself. And have someone watch you, or do it yourself. Hanzala. Radiallahu anhu met Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu He told him, you know, when I sit with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he talks about heaven and talks about hell and talks about death and everything, I feel like I'm living there. I'm a different man. Then he leaves, and I go home, and I mix with my family, and I mix with my work, and. It's like I'm no longer in the same level of faith. I think I'm a hypocrite. Nafaqa Hamba. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, you know, I get that feeling sometimes too. Let's go to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi So they went to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and they asked him that. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, لو يعني 
تكونون على ما أنتم عليه عندما تكونوا معي لصافحتكم الملائكة في الطرقات If you stay the way you are when you are with me connected angels will be shaking your hands in the streets and at your home يعني you would reach level of angels and then he comforted them and he said ولكن ساعة وساعة ساعة وساعة ساعة وساعة repeated three times يعني you get that feeling sometimes give yourself a little break enjoy yourself play something play a game do something reconnect you cannot be connected 100% in the sense that always always يعني you're not involved in haram يعني we're not saying you leave and you involve yourself with haram but at the same time enjoy yourself so that's what I tell you enjoy yourself but be moderate with it and remember that they say it in Arabic أخطر أنواع العقارب مين بعرف إيش عقرب الساعة the most dangerous scorpions is the scorpion of the clock شو إيش رأيك أما إذا تهموها عقرب the, the, the arm of the clock is called Akrab, which is scorpion in Arabic. So it is dangerous. Time, make sure time is very valuable in your life. Make sure you pay attention to time. Make sure you utilize your time. Make sure you care for your time. One person took calculation of time, and I conclude with that. He said, you know, the Sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّةِ بَيْنَ السِّتِينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَا يُجَاوِزُهُنْ The life for my ummah between 60 and 70. Very few who go more than 70. So let's take it 70, the max. He counted sleeping 7 hours, working 7 hours, eating and all of that. Ends up with 22 hours a day. You have no choice with it. It passes from your day. And he calculated it that one hour, and if you, if you look at 22 hours, you count that 66 years. So you have four years to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from 70 years. So from those four years, he calculated that each hour is three months. The hour that passes from your time it's like three months pass from your life. Imagine when you put eight hours and more from that, how many years you wasted from your life and what is left, all you have is four years. You put that in the games, you end up what? What did you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Live in 70 years. That should make you think and it should make you cut as a believer, as someone who expects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stop them and question them. So, my friends, when you talk about Fortnite, when you talk about Minecraft, and you talk about all other games, remember that you can die while you're playing it. And you can die while you're playing it, and you did not pray your prayer. Imagine the angel of death coming to you when you are playing, and your prayer is past due. You did not pray Asr and Dhuhr and it's Asr time and then you die. You die on the game. Look what people go in to say. How did he die? He was playing games. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he passed, when before he was a prophet, when he passed by the people of Quraysh, قالوا تعال يا محمد إلعب معنا قال لم أخلق لهذا before he was a prophet. They told him, oh Muhammad, come and play with us. He said, I'm not created to play. I'm not created to play, and you're not created. And the ayah I started with, You think you created in vain just to play games and have fun and enjoy yourself and die and nothing? Glory to Allah to do that. 
ما خلقناهما لاعبين لو أردنا أن نتخذ له ولا اتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمره فإذا هو زال ولكم الويل مما تصفون when someone attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heavens and earth in vain or created you in vain and you're not going to be accounted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said it وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counting the leaves of the trees, the drops of the water. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala, is He going to account the trees? No. Is He going to account the rain? No. So He counts it, and you think He's not going to count your minutes and hours when you are praying? At play, he is going indeed. So take it seriously, take your life seriously, and think of death all the time, and make sure you fulfill your obligations. Take care of your health, yourself, take care of your family, and take care of those you are in charge with, and on top of all of that, make sure you are upholding the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding the value of life, and in particular, the value of your time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you a successful person inshallah in this world and in this hereafter. Make sure that you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you and make sure you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always continue to guide you. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa an. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.